right, I'll start by saying you'll have to excuse me if I seem a bit out of breath. I'm just getting over a chest infection. And it's been a nightmare for the past 10 days. I'm on antibiotics at the moment, get rid of it. I've had to just finish them, so hopefully in the next couple of days it should be gone. Anyway, this amp, pleasant surprise. Out of all those cheap Chinese amps that they sell on eBay, this one is the only one I've ever seen that can deliver what it says on the box. That chip there is um, a four channel stereo um, IC amplifier chip found in high end car radios and it can deliver 4 times 45 watts but that's only at, at uh, 14 14.2 volts and the back's labelled at 12 but that accepts 14.2 volts and you'll get the best out of this at 14 volts out of this little amp this is probably why people are saying they don't give off the wattage that they say they do is because they're, they're under vaulting them and there's nothing to worry about because another good thing about this is it comes with a reverse polarity protection diode there now that's a nice thing to see on a on a budget amplifier but that diode there stops you reversing polarity and doing damage to the rest of the board so that's a welcome addition if <coughs> excuse me if you do run this at 14.2 uh, volts you might have to change this capacitor because it's only rated at 16 volts anyway so you're pushing that right to its limit so I changed that 3300 microfarad cap to a 25 volt one then you'll be good to go but if you're running it from 12 volts you know you won't have to touch that another thing you will have to do as well and I was a bit shocked about this actually that's a class AB chip it's not a class T tripath nothing like that which means it's less efficient now that doesn't mean it can't give off the watts it says that means it'll get very hot and the only thing on there is this little aluminium block now what I'm going to do is put some um, heat sink plaster on there when I put it back together seeing as I'm never going to be able to you know I'm never going to take it apart again it'll be a permanent fixture to the side of the frame it just screws to the side of the frame there and then two screw holes so if I put some um, heat sink plaster on there that'll make the whole of the frame act as a heat sink to cool it down because they do get hot believe me they do get hot they're not, they're not the most um, efficient chip but they are much better sounding than a class T uh, or class D sorry because uh, with the other uh, um, ones found in the leap eye amps they need a lot of filtration around this area to smooth the sound out whereas these don't because these are a proper hi-fi amp which is a good thing um, it's designed for 4 ohm loads and that's what I'd stick to, I wouldn't put 8 ohm speakers on this, I'd just put 4 ohm ones on it and that's where you get the best sound out of it then but I'm very impressed with this I mean it was only 18 quid and uh, it's like I say it's the only one I've ever seen out of all these amplifiers that has got the, the, the proper parts in that it should have the rest of them have been using mismatched parts from factory for all throwouts and just been soldered underneath on the board this one uh, is pretty good another thing I'll mention about this chip this um, TDA 7388 it is it's built by ST Electronics it has got a thermal um, how can I say this uh, but like on a computer's process it's got a thermal cut down so if it gets too hot it'll it'll drop the volt the wattage down to about 10 watts a channel so it's vitally important that you get the heat sink compound on there onto the frame so this is the stuff I use it's a very permanent thing so if you're going to use this don't expect take it apart again not the heat sink anyway but it shouldn't be a problem anyway two screws there you can unscrew from the from the block so it should be okay well, I can't see him taking this apart again anyway I got it for my computer actually and uh, I was going to because it's got four channels on there you can buy wire speakers which is great and it's not just like I say it's not bridged from the front left a differential it is actually four channels so that's great though so I'll get it put together now and uh, I'll give you a bit of a sound demo on my uh, Wharfdale Diamond speakers Right, it's been connected up to my Wharfdale Diamond 9.1 speakers. 
and it's something that you'll hear straight away as soon as you switch this amp on is the hiss I'll just take it closer into the speaker as you can hear that hiss so you definitely definitely gonna have to change the filter capacitors in this if you want to use it but apart from that it's all good and I've just double checked it is a, it is a proper four channel amp it isn't um, a differential between the front left and right it is proper four channels so um, we're all good there but uh, it plays from USB and um, SD card but you've got to make sure that the SD card or the USB stick is formatted to FAT32 otherwise it won't even recognize it but uh, yeah it's all good it sounds pretty good There's a line in. There's a radio. So such things can happen on the tour. Sometimes exceptional things happen and sometimes there's a chance to get all agitated and angry and sometimes it's better to be calm and just let the dust settle on things and I think that was an intention of. we saw that one coming but there's something else you'll notice as well when you switch it off. Can you hear that? So you see the cone moving on the on the speaker there. That's a DC current getting through to the to the uh, speakers. So I'm definitely gonna have to change those filter capacitors. But a, apart from that, the little niggly things. You know, it's a pretty decent little amp. I'm surprised how good it sounds. It's obviously never going to beat me um, vintage Sony here. But obviously, you know, it's not supposed to, is it? It's just a, a cheap budget amp. You know, for a computer or a car or something. So, uh, yeah, connected to my um, power supply that I built last year. This is a 15 amp supply, so it's got more than enough current going in there. You see, in the moment, I'm running at 12.5 volts. It should be running at 14.2, so I have to adjust that inside. But, yeah, so there's one thing you've got to be careful of with this is when you switch it on. Can you hear that? That's DC current going straight through to the speakers so you know the speakers aren't going to last long if you keep playing it so you can have to definitely change those filter caps on the remote there is a folder repeat a one repeat random as well which is good for all repeat and you've got a four a four stage equalizer as well okay the bass and travel controls have to be adjusted from the front here though careful of this music because I don't want to get a copyright strike <laughs> so I'll just pause that but anyway yeah that's, it's a, so the bottom line on this amp is it, it's pretty decent but make sure you change those filter capacitors because your speakers won't last long otherwise it's sending quite a, a substantial amount of DC current through to the speakers at bad look of it so I'm gonna have to get my multimeter on there and test what's going on find out what's going on okay so that heat sink what I did it's set now, it's been left overnight. That's set rock solid in place now, so that's going nowhere. And that is getting warm now, like it's supposed to do. Okay. So thanks for watching the video, and if you've got any questions about this little amp, give us a, give us a message, will you? And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, see ya.